Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to do a tutorial for an armband from this book. It's called Arabic Motifs and it's by Asha Savla. And she is one of my favorite artists. I absolutely love her books. And we're going to be doing an armband from page 5. So it's going to be this one. And before we get started I'm going to tell you the items I'm going to use in this tutorial. So I'm going to use my acrylic practiced hand. This is the long armed version so we will be doing an armband so I thought it'd be good to use the one that has an actual arm. These are available in a shorter version that cuts off about here so it goes up to the about the wrist. Um, some people had requested those so I went ahead and filled that request so those are available on my website as well as the long arm version. And I'm also going to be using a henna cone. So that's what I'm going to be applying the design with. And um, should you have any additional questions, I will put links to all the items that I use down in the information box below. So let's go ahead and get started on this design. So let's go ahead and take another look at it. And I kind of want to break down the design. And you can pretty much do it any way you would like. Um, whether this is pointing down or this is pointing down, it's completely up to you. But I find that armbands are really fun to do, especially for brides who want to do um, something a little more elaborate um, on the upper arm. If they're wearing a dress that is sleeveless, this is a really um, pretty cool thing to add on there. So armbands are becoming popular with my brides as I head into spring and summer. So now that we've taken a detailed look at the design, let's go ahead and start applying it here. I'm going to put the book off to the side. And we're going to start with the main shape of the design, which is just three lines. Um, two of the lines are thicker than the others. So the first one is pretty thick. And I'm just going to show you how that's done. So it does have kind of like a downward slope there, about halfway point. And then come back up. Like so. Pretty easy. Right? And because this line is thicker than the next one, I'm going to go ahead and thicken it by going over it again. Now, typically I don't do this, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do it this way because a lot of people say that they learn easiest this way with the thicker lines by just going back over the line. However, if I was not doing a tutorial, I would have just done a thicker line the first time, and you do that by adding extra pressure onto the cone. So my cone actually has a very very thin line that just by adding extra pressure it forces more henna to come out at the same time that you would um, do a thinner line so you've got more henna to place and so it just ends up making a thicker line so that's how that works if that makes any sense. And then I'm going to come in with another line this one's going to be thin so I'm not going to go back over this one. So we're just going to Add that one in. There are a couple of little breaks in the line. This cone is old. has old henna on it, so it doesn't drape as nicely as a fresh cone would. And I don't like to waste henna, so I do use older cones for tutorials. And sometimes older henna doesn't do what we want it to do, but I don't like to waste, so got to use them for something. So there's that thinner line there. And then we're going to go ahead and do another thicker line. So I'm going to show you how I would normally do it, which is putting a lot of pressure on the cone, which forces more henna paste to come out at one time, making the line thicker. And if you want a thinner line, you just do lighter pressure. Very, very, very easy. And also when you have thick lines and thin lines in your design, it gives it more depth and it makes the design look really neat. Okay. And then next we have what I call gingerbread that goes on this line here. And I'll show you the picture in the book again what I'm talking about. So that's this stuff here. Those little... I'll tell you in another video why I call it gingerbread. I did explain it in a video previously, but it was a much older video. It must have been several years ago that I explained that, so I'll explain it again in another video. 
And if you have any questions either about this tutorial or about henna in general, go ahead and put them in the comments section. I'm going to go ahead and do a Q&A video coming up pretty soon here. Um, and I wanted to do those weekly, but I think I'm just going to do them monthly. That way I can put a lot of questions in one video. And answers in one video. So, there we go with the gingerbread. Very easy, right? Okay. And then we're going to start with this portion here. So now that we've completed the gingerbread, we're going to go ahead and start in with this flower. Or half flower, or whatever. So we're just going to do a curved line and then fill it in like it is in the book. And then after that, there's a series of thinner lines that go around it. Like so. And you can do as many as you want in the book. Let me see here. There are probably about four. So I'm going to go ahead and do four. But you can do as few or as many as you like. There we go. And then more gingerbread. And gingerbread can be very forgiving too, especially if you're doing something that's round and you get off track a little bit and it kind of loses its shape. Gingerbread really does help you to get back on track. And I'll teach you about that technique in, in a 101, a henna beginner video, if you'd like to learn that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in those kind of square, not really squares, these are rectangle shaped petals here. These are kind of fun to put on designs here. And I like to do these with thick lines, but you can do these with thin lines too. Whatever your preference is. And I didn't really look at the book when I decided to put these on. Um, you, When you're doing a design from a book, you don't have to do it line for line. If you know the technique to make the shape and you know where it goes, you can just go ahead and do that. Because you may be doing this as an armband. It could be on the lower arm or the upper arm. The person you may be applying it to may be bigger or smaller than the person who's in the book. So you have to learn how to adjust. So as long as you know how to apply the shape and you know the techniques needed to apply said shape, you should be good to go. It shouldn't be too difficult for you, even if it doesn't exactly match up to what's in the book. Usually when I do designs from a book, it never exactly matches the book. It's very rare that that happens. So we've got this bottom portion done. Now we're going to move on to this top portion here. So, looks like there's just a circle filled in with henna paste. Easy enough, it doesn't need to be perfect. You can round it out and correct it if you need to as you fill it in. That's pretty simple, very easy. And it has one of these guys around it. And this has kind of a point on it. Go back around. Connect it there, put some gingerbread on there. I have different names for different shapes. Maybe I should just do a video just on that. Because if I'm going to continue to do teaching videos and I'm referring to certain shapes, it may be confusing to people why I refer to things. And every artist has a different name for things, what they call certain shapes in henna. So. Sometimes we borrow from each other. Sometimes we have different names for the same thing. So, you never know. All right. And so, um, what we have next is this part here. We have these guys on the side, and then we have these guys on the top. What I'm going to go ahead and do is do these guys on the top here, and then fit these in after I'm done with that. You don't have to do it that way. You can put the side parts on first, and then... Do the little flower 
petally bits that go on top. It's just completely up to you. And because this is more Arabic style, with a heavy Indian influence in the henna, it's going to, um, it's going to have more bold lines than you would normally see. And then this has some shading. And when I do shading, I just put a little ball of henna on the tip. I just squeeze a little bit out until there's just a small ball of henna right there on the tip of the cone. And then I just kind of move it around. It's just that easy. And on that petal, I kind of came up with a thin line and then thickened it. Just to give the design a little bit more depth. And then we're going to shade... Here. Very easy. Okay. Then we're going to do the same on this side. I came up with a thin line, put a little bit more pressure on the cone and thickened it, and then came down with a thick line and then thinned it out. Put a little dot there and do some shading. And as you become more seasoned as a henna artist, going from one technique to the next can happen really quickly. However, when you are still new to henna, you may have to take some time to switch between techniques, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, being fast is not part of being a good henna artist. It's not an indicator that you're a good henna artist. I used to have sometimes, and this is quite a few years ago, people would tell me, you're so good and you're so talented, but you're slow. <laughs> As if that was an insult to me, you know? You know, being quick has nothing to do with technique. And that's just purely my opinion. I've seen some henna artists who are really, really fast, and they're absolutely horrible. I'm not going to name any of them, but, you know, it's, sometimes, you know, people are impressed by speed, and it's like, well person's really fast, but their technique is absolutely horrible. But people are really impressed by speed. Don't worry about that, okay? If that's an issue that you have, don't worry about it. Your speed will pick up with time, but speed is not an indicator of how talented you are anyway. So don't worry about it. And then we have... Here's where we are here. So I'm going to go ahead and add these um, things in here. I don't like these. If this were my design book, I wouldn't have put these in here. But I'm following the design book, so we're going to do those. Though um, I may alter it a little bit. Like I said, I don't like those, but I'll put them on anyway. <laughs> Just for the sake. However, if I was doing this on somebody else, I'd probably change up the design a little bit. But And when I do change the design... Um, when I'm applying henna to someone, I will let them know in advance, or I'll ask their permission if it's okay for me to alter the design. Because sometimes I just don't like what other people do. And there's nothing wrong with that. When you're an artist, sometimes you just gotta change things up a little bit. Sometimes, all the time. Okay. Sometimes I feel like design books are just simply meant as a guide. I get inspiration from other people's designs, and sometimes I'll do them spot on, and then sometimes I, you know, I'll like a flower, and I'll use the flower from the design, and then I'll completely do something different with the rest of the design. I won't follow the rest of their plan at all, because it's just not my style. Just not what I want to do. Okay. So I've got that part finished. Okay. on top of those. Okay. And some wider loop de loos. Okay. 
And you know, I get lots of different types of requests from people on how, what style of video they would like to see. Some people prefer to hear me talking, and then some people don't. I know I have um, a pretty big international audience, and not everybody speaks English. And so I'm trying to help people the best that I can. I do have the ability to get things translated into Spanish, French, and Arabic. So if you want to write to me in any of those languages, um, please feel free to send me an email at freehem, um, info at freehemmindy.net. I'll put a link to my email address in the information box. And then you can write me in French and Spanish and Arabic and then you will get a reply. Okay, so that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the design in the book. And then there we go. So that was pretty easy. Let me know what you think. If you like this type of video where I kind of talk through each step with you and give you tips along the way, please feel free to let me know. I would love to be able to continue to do more videos like this. This is my preferred way of filming a video. Or if you prefer, um, I um, talk about the tools that I use, show you how to use them, and then just show you the after um, result of the design that I use. I can do more videos like that or if you just prefer the videos with the music let me know. Everybody prefers something different. I'm constantly getting different requests but I just want to make sure that I'm um, teaching in a way that is uh, beneficial to all of you. So thank you very much for watching this video. Like I said before all the links are down in the information box below the video including links to my blog, my website where you can buy henna supplies, um, there's also links to my social media. I have Instagram, Facebook, Periscope. Um, what else do I have? I have Snapchat, which I have not figured out how to use yet. I promise I will. It's just not at the top of my list. Um, my mailing address is there if you would like to send me a letter. Um, I like to receive letters or postcards. I like to hear from people all over the world. So please feel free to write to me. You don't have to send me an email. You can write me a, a the old-fashioned way. Send me a letter. And uh, yeah, all the information is there. So thank you so much again for watching. Please rate, please comment, and please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.